The Adelaide Footy Club have had an extraordinary time of it in season 2015. They lost their senior coach in the most unforeseen and uh, extraordinary circumstances mid-year and in the face of that it took really great leadership from a number of people at that club to make sure that they stayed centred and able to operate. They did so to the point where they played in and won a final and much of that has to do with our very special guest tonight. He tore the first final to shreds. He is a superstar of the competition and a great friend of our show. Welcome Taylor Walker to the footy show. <laughs> Well, Tex, welcome. Um, it's been uh, an unbelievable year this year. So many amazing highs and, and just what we've talked about. Uh, how does it sit with you now that you've had a little bit of time to let it wash over you? Yeah, look, it's been a very interesting year for <coughs> us as a footy club. We lost uh, Walsh on July 3rd and we had plenty more footy in us. Um, and we had amazing support from not only our footy club but the whole AFL community. Um, and it took a lot of people to step up and whether it be coaches or players, but the whole footy club stepped up and we were able to stay together and, and galvanise. And as you said just then, that we, were, we played in a final and we are very envy of Hawthorne. Um, they're su September specialists um, and that's where we want to get to. Did the circumstances, uh, Tex, this year, did it fast track your leadership? I mean, it was a surprise appointment outside the uh, Adelaide footy club walls, um, but inside it was the, you know, an easy decision, it was said from Phil Walsh at the time. But... Given the circumstances, do you think you know you grew as a leader even quicker, and have you surprised yourself even from a leadership point of view? I probably won't be able to answer that until um, I sit back and reflect on the year. Um, but what I will say is I had great support around me. I've got uh, five guys in the leadership group, which I was able to lean on throughout the year, and, and they were great for me. And, and as a campo coming in as, as a caretaker, um, he was great for me as well. And, and really happy with the year that the boys put together. And while you had footy there, I guess you are able to compartmentalise the tragic circumstances. I mean, has it been, and you, you know, the, se the season finishes quickly, you have a beer and uh, drown your sorrows, and is it hit you yet now without footy to go to, without training to go to, without surrounding yourself in an environment that has been so supportive? I mean, has there been that, that moment yet where you, the realisation really belts you? Yeah, look, I suppose for myself as an individual, I wanted to... Um, probably not get so emotional in front of the boys but I've had my times along the way where I've been by myself and, and got a bit emotional. Um, it's obviously losing a coach and Phil gave me the opportunity to be captain of a great club and I'll cherish that for the rest of my life. Um, but I've had great support and the boys have been um, amazing this year and I couldn't be prouder of such a great group. All right Tex, let's move on to something you've all had to deal with just recently and that is the departure of Arguably your best player, in fact, one of the competition's best players in Paddy Dangerfield. Um, I, I, don't th I think the thing that people from outside don't understand is that y you're genuinely filthy when a, a player as good as this decides that he doesn't want to be at your club anymore. Yeah, look, it's very disappointing that Danger's um, going to explore free agency and, and head home, but um, we wish him all the best, and um, as a footy club, we've got to move on. Uh, we can't sit around and dwell on it. And I'm sure the footy club, and um, whether it be Geelong or wherever he goes, will try and get a, the best result possible for both footy clubs. Yeah, I, and, and we get that, and we know you're all mates, and so, so we understand all of that, and we know the landscape. But it doesn't stop you being filthy when it happens. No, it's always <laughs> disappointing to lose one of your good players, or a, even a player. Um, but I spoke to Sloane yesterday over a few beers, and we'll probably have to get him out of the pub. Tell us, Tex, if you <laughs> yeah, the yeah, you're involved yeah, with yeah. him, yeah. Tell us how you found out. Now, it's been reported that um, Paddy Dangerfield went to the club a couple of weeks ago to David Noble and uh, told him of his decision. Um, tell me how Paddy has relayed that to the playing group. Uh, he made a phone call to me as an individual, and I think he tried to do that to the whole playing group. Um, I got mine Tuesday, and he told me that uh, he was going home for family reasons. Um, and that he's looking to uh, probably make a family and uh, he wants to do that back in Geelong. So I respect his decision, although I'm disappointed about it, but um, as a footy club we've got to move on. I mean, eight years I think he's been there. You've been through a lot. I mean, a phone call, would he not have, I would have thought, set up in front of the playing group and, and put it out on the, on the line, on the table as to why? I mean, you're disappointed oh. about that? 
Oh, it's up to Danger. That was his decision on the way he did it. But, um, yeah, it's Danger's decision the way he wanted to let the whole playing group know. Your text, did you try and persuade him? Did you use your great uh, powers of persuasion to say, now, listen, think about this, mate. We've got a good thing going here. Why are you doing I know why he's doing it. Did you'd, you try and dissuade him? You'd be pretty happy that he's going to Geelong, wouldn't you? Mm. Yeah, no, I'd be very happy he's going to Geelong, <laughs> yeah. but um, uh, I'm asking you, did you try and dissuade oh, him? There's a couple of conversations along the way that, uh, uh, that I had. How did him. they go? He just explained that he hasn't made his decision <clears throat> up. What yeah. about, he was there yesterday, wasn't he? You were all together yesterday at Wacky Wednesday? We were there at Wacky Wednesday and Danger, Danger came. <laughs> There you are there, going on, trying to hide from the media. Which one's Danger walking into the pub? This is Wacky Wednesday. Where is he? Which, I don't know which one he is. Which one is he? There's Daniel Farley. I'm not too sure which one Danger is. Um, but you were all there yesterday, were you? you... Danger would probably be in the blue and white top right there. That is it, the catch jumper. The catch jumper. Yeah. But you were there yesterday. Did you have a chat yesterday? No, nah, over a few beers we did, but um, probably not the best time to have a chat when you... Having a few beers and it's been an emotional season for the footy club. So. On the contrary, uh, I yes. reckon that's the best time yes. to have a chat, mate. <laughs> get, half, <laughs> get half cut and have a few home truths. Start to, you know, you get a bit aggressive when you've had a few drinks and you can really lay it on the line. 45 blokes on the one, you reckon? That's it. <laughs> uh, that was a good bit of vision. How do we know that was anything to do with foot? That could have been anyone walking into a pub. Could have been. Hey, what do, you want, what do you want for him? What should you get for him? Adelaide Crows. I will take Joel Selwood, Tom Hawkins, <laughs> all the above. <laughs> would like a few of those guys. Compensation. But, um, you get compensation. I'm sure that I'm sure the club will, will sort that out. We'll get our compensation pick and um, whatever else. I'll let the club handle that. I'm not all over that. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I know it's a topic not so much that players get immersed in, but right now there's a bit of a uh, standoff between Adelaide and Geelong. I'm sure they'll get the deal done somewhere down the track. The next one is the coaching uh, situation. John Walsfold. Of course, has uh, done a terrific job, uh, filled the breach there with Scott Camparelli. Now, he's um, exploring his options at Essendon. Scott Camparelli has said that he's not a candidate for the senior coaching job, which we all thought he would be a strong candidate. Well, who's that leave? I'm not too sure. I'm not on the, the pick of the uh, coaches. But what I will say is to have John Worsfold come over and drop everything in Perth, to be able to come over to a footy club when one of his really good mates has just passed away and... He was outstanding for us, so we were very lucky to have him. Um, and I wish him all the best for whatever's next for him. And obviously Campo stood up and um, he's not taking on the coach's role, but he'll still stay at the club. So I'm sure we'll get the best available coach out there. I think there are some good ones too, uh, Texans, so you won't have too many issues there. We did pick up on this. Um, from the, Now, we're not going to pound you on danger. We've done enough of that. But we enjoyed this Instagram <laughs> exchange that we saw because uh, this is Paddy Dangerfield saying to uh, Christian Petraka, Mick Dundee called and he wants his hat back. <laughs> this is over in uh, the US, of course. And then Christian Petraka retorted, Adelaide called, they want you back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, what about your commentary, Jim? Of course, Tex, I don't know if you've heard this one, but uh, the push-up king's gone. It was one of Jim's favourites on Triple M. And now he loves you. And have a listen to this last week, Tex, when you're on fire. Knight. Big ball. Long big ball. looking for the Texan. Look at this man. Tex has got it on the wing. Take all the space, Tex. And ignore Jerker for Christ's sake. <laughs> Texan, instead of that, look at the square oh. he This man. Genius! Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and of course, Jerker. Jim won the AFM, AFL Media Awards for the best caller, oh. as voted by us. No, yeah. <laughs> I will say this: I, I feel a bit embarrassed because I'm a big fan of Jerker, and he got up and no, played beautifully the next week. Oh, so, yeah. you got him uh, up apparently, he wasn't overly happy with me. Jerker. Next, Sorry, tell me man. about the next week. Now, I don't want to bring this up, but I mean, you've got to learn from your losses. So, you had a fantastic result against the Western Bulldogs. You came up against the Hawthorne Footy Club. Boys have spoken about it, love uncontested ball, love to chip it around. All of a sudden, you know, you've got 120 uncontested marks. Did you get it wrong in the preparation? No, I don't think we did. We went into the game clearly having a plan on how we thought we could beat them. Um, and pretty simply that we were pretty ordinary and they were very good. We weren't able to get our hands on the footy and we, when they got it, we weren't able to stop them. So it was very disappointing to end the season like that. But uh, we knew that coming off the loss that they had with West Coast that they were coming going to come out firing and as I said I'm just very proud of the boys to get to where we have this year.
Hey, Tex, a couple of things we've seen. I love this. I don't know whether we've got this ready up in the box because it's slightly out of the way. Well, here, first of all, it's uh, the tweet about you needing a boat. Does anyone know or have a houseboat they want to hire over New Year's or have friends that do? This is for uh, what reason, Tex? Well, we want to have a good time. A anything special? <laughs> anything you're specially doing? Or, uh... Well, hopefully going on a boat and cruise down the river, but... Uh... I, I thought Sam. there might be a special announcement you've got ready, Tex. <laughs> Samuel's got a boat. Uh, Samuel's got a boat. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's got a massive boat. Yeah, yeah I, I could, yeah. Is it? <laughs> it's a what? Up for hire or? High, uh, Texas? I, I, I could take you out in it, mate. We could take you out into the middle of the bay. That's all we got over here in Melbourne, the bay. It's beautiful. Get out in the middle. No one can interrupt you. There'd be a few things, a few boxes you'd have to tick. <laughs> We'd have to increase. Well, would they be? well uh, I've got a public liability uh, insurance of five million. I'd have to raise that to about a hundred million. Uh, you'd have to pay a bond. Uh, who pays How for much? the entertainment? Wait. How much is? Bond would be extensive. Uh, who pays for the entertainment? Uh, you I'm, know, like, I'm sure you'd what know. would you require? I'm sure you'd know a few uh, yeah. ladies. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Come on, Texas. Yeah, he knows no plenty of ladies, and the, your yeah. favourite lady, yeah. your mum, is uh, caught up with a force. Yeah, that's this, where that. was this force, and what are you doing with uh, Mrs. Tex? Uh, well, this charming lass. I didn't know it was Mrs. Tex, but I uh, <laughs> thought she was a fair piece there. I think oh. we're still, <laughs> still allowed to say women are good looking, aren't you? You are. I think absolutely. I am. Well, I'm saying it anyhow. And I saw her at the uh, Anzac Day game between Essendon and Collingwood, and I thought I could get her on the boat. She'd that, <laughs> that'd, that'd put a dampener on your whole. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That yeah. piece there's nearly as good as your piece. Hey. <laughs> What's that? That piece there's nearly as good as your piece. <laughs> on the top of your head, he's talking. On about. the top of your head. <laughs> yeah. 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 Look at that. Hey, Tex, we want to know once and for all. Did you fart oh, at the press conference or are about to see? Yes or no? Hello, fair. Hang on. Could you? <laughs> oh, no. Now, yes or no, Tex? Uh, yeah, I might have. Oh. <laughs> Hey, Tex, we, we, we had this discussion in Big Bill's house about uh, just gratuitous farting. Are you telling me that when you're sitting down, you actually couldn't hold that back? You just, it just had to ease it out? Well, going into the media conference, the uh, media manager wouldn't let me go to the toilet, so... And you didn't have control enough of your bowels just to, just to hold it in? It was... No, yeah. no, I didn't. Obviously. <laughs> it just snuck out for us, and that yeah. happens from time to no, time. No, no, it you doesn't. Could, well, you no, it doesn't. You've got a big couple of weeks. You'll be in Melbourne for the grand final. I'd imagine you'll catch up with Bernard and uh, yeah. just do the normal social rounds. Yeah, I'll be staying at Bernie's house, so I'm, I'm sure we'll be out and about. Mm -hmm. Hey, Gaz, we need to. We always have fun with Tex because he is a great friend of ours, and we've known him for a very, very long time. But he has, since taking over the leadership of this club, oh. uh, shown an amazing amount of exactly what that club needed, and that is strength and leadership. Yeah. And a statesman. He is. He's just a superstar, and we thank the you very father. much for coming along, mate. Great, Tex. Great to have you We're going to take a break. Neil Dunham, David Meeks, up next on the Footy Show.